Speed has always fascinated humans. From the first automobiles that struggled to reach 20 miles per hour to today's hypercars that comfortably cruise at over 200 miles per hour, the pursuit of speed has defined automotive history. But there is a strange barrier in the world of cars. Once you approach the 300 miles per hour mark, things get complicated. And it's not just a matter of having a bigger engine or a more horsepower. The closer you get to 300 miles per hour, the more the rules of physics, engineering, and human survival work against you. So why is it almost impossible for cars to go 300 miles per hour? Let's break it down. The first thing we need to understand is aerodynamic drag. At lower speeds, drag doesn't matter much, but as speed increases, drag doesn't just rise in a straight line, it multiplies exponentially. At highway speeds, your car might be fighting against a few dozen horsepower worth of air resistance. But at 300 miles per hour, the air becomes like a wall. The drag force increases with the square of the velocity. Meaning that if you double your speed, drag goes up four times. At 300 miles per hour, the force of air hitting the car is thousands of pounds pushing directly against it. This means that to break through, you need an enormous amount of power just to overcome drag alone, not even counting rolling resistance drive strain losses or a tire friction that's why cars aiming for 300 miles per hour need the engines producing well over 1500 horsepower but horsepower alone isn't enough you can't simply strap a jet engine to a car and call it a day because then we run into the next major problem aerodynamic stability at 300 miles per hour, cars are essentially airplanes that don't want to fly. The air flowing over and under the body of the car can easily create lift. A slight imbalance in design, a poorly shaped front splinter or even a crosswind can generate forces that literally pick the car up off the ground. Once that happens, the car isn't driving anymore, it's crashing. That's why car designers spent years sculpting the body in wind tunnels. They use splitters, diffusers, and active spoilers to keep the vehicle glued to the ground. But here is the paradox. The more you add downfalls, the more drag you also add which makes it even harder to push through the air at extreme speeds. It's a constant battle between stability and speed. Now let's talk about tires, which are probably the most overlooked part of this entire equation. Tires are the only thing connecting the car to the road, and at 300 miles per hour, they are spinning at over 2,500 rotations per minute. The centrifugal force on the rubber is insane. It is enough to literally rip the tire apart from the inside. Traditional road tires would shred within seconds at those speeds. That's why manufacturers have to design specialized tires reinforced with carbon fiber and Kevlar, tested under extreme conditions, and even then, they are only rated for short bursts. In fact, when Bugatti was preparing its Chiron Supersport 300 Plus for its record-breaking run, they powered with Michelin to develop custom tires that could withstand these forces. Each tire was x-rayed before use to check for microscopic flaws because even the tiniest weakness could cause a catastrophic blowout at that speed. Speaking of Bugatti, let's not forget that the Chiron Supersport 300 Plus 
became the first production car to officially break the 300 miles per hour barrier in 2019. That achievement came with caveats. The record wasn't recognized by Guinness World Records because the run was only done in one direction, not the required two-way average. And more importantly, Bugatti itself admitted that the car was modified and not exactly identical to what customers could buy. They even said they weren't interested in pushing further because the risks and challenges were just too extreme. That tells you something. Even with near-unlimited resources, cutting-edge engineering and massive budgets, going 300 miles per hour is still right on the edge of what is possible. But let's step away from drag and tires for a moment and talk about mechanical stress. Every component in a car, engine pistons, crankshafts, transmission gears, drive shafts, faces unimaginable forces at 300 miles per hour. The faster you go, the more every small weakness gets magnified. An engine running at full throttle for just a few minutes can generate heat so intense that metals expand, lubricants break down, and tolerances vanish. Cooling systems struggle to keep up. Gearboxes must handle thousands of newton meters of torque without exploding. Even wheel bearings, those tiny pieces of metal that let your wheels spin freely, are put under stress levels close to what you would find in jet turbines. Now let's imagine you somehow solved all of these engineering challenges. There is still the issue of roads. To reach 300 miles per hour, you need a surface that is absolutely smooth and perfectly straight for miles. Regular roads, forget it. They are too bumpy, too crowded, and too unsafe. That's why record attempts happen on specially prepared test tracks like Volkswagen Aralesien in Germany or on long desert runways. Even the slightest bump at 300 miles per hour can unsettle the car and cause disaster. And remember, tires, suspension, and aerodynamics are all tuned for just one condition maximum speed in a straight line. Try taking a corner at that speed, and you would be airborne before you even realized what happened. There is also safety and human limits to consider. At 300 miles per hour, if something goes wrong, the driver has virtually no chance of survival. Reaction times shrink to almost nothing. A car traveling at that speed covers the length of a football field in under a second. Breaking distances stretch to over a mile. The forces on the human body during sudden deceleration or a crash are far beyond what is survivable. Even professional drivers approach these runs with extreme caution, knowing that any mistake could be fatal. And then we arrive at the final and perhaps biggest limitation, diminishing returns. The jump from 200 miles per hour to 250 miles per hour was already massive in terms of engineering. Pushing from 250 to 300 miles per hour isn't just another 50 miles per hour. It's an entirely new realm of problems. Every mile per hour gained requires exponentially more money, more power, and more advanced technology. That's why so few companies even attempt it. Koenigsegg, Hennessy, and Bugatti are among the only ones trying and even they approach the challenge more as a showcase of engineering rather than something practical for everyday cars.